Hi, we're here today to talk about uh, relationships between voltage and current and power in a parallel RLC circuit. So we're going to talk about this circuit up here with no numbers in it. But what I've got here is an AC source with a resistive component, an inductive component that has resistance as a part of it, a real world coil, and then a capacitive branch as well. Now the basic idea here that we're going to talk about is kind of with goes along with my other parallel RLC videos, but this is just the relationships between them, right? When I'm solving this, each branch has its own little impedance triangle, right? We know the resistance there will be in phase. We know that the coil is going to have its own impedance triangle and the capacitor is going to be out of phase. And now that's, I would calculate all those impedances and that's how I would end up solving the current in each branch. So we know because of Kirchhoff's voltage law that I would have source voltage across the first branch, source voltage across the second branch, and source voltage across that third branch. That allows me to calculate the current within each branch. Right, so I can calculate all three of those currents. Now that's great. Um, but where I want to go from there, right, I figure out everything within the circuit, within each branch, that's great. What I cannot do is I cannot combine these ohmic values to get a total circuit ohmic value. Instead, what I'm going to do is if I'm looking for total current, right, I total, I need to think about my phasor diagrams and I need to combine those vectorally. So it's going to look, and again, relationships are going to look something like this on that phasor diagram. So our voltage is going to be our reference. And that is just because it's constant throughout each branch within the circuit. Then on there, I'm going to have my three different branches, right? So my resistive branch, we know that with a resistor, current and voltage are in phase. Therefore, if my voltage is the reference, my current of my resistor, I of the resistor is going to be right there on top of it. Awesome. Now the current through my inductive branch. Now the inductive branch is the tricky one. So we know the relationship between current and voltage in an inductive branch. Current will lag the voltage. The inductance opposes a change in current. Therefore, the current will lag the voltage. So my current is going to be somewhere down here. Now it's not at a perfect 90 because there is some in phase component. So it's going to be somewhere between zero and negative 90. So that's I of my coil. Now the capacitor, in most cases we deal with capacitors as a pure capacitor. And because capacitors have capacitance, which opposes a change in voltage, I, my voltage lags my current, or we say current leads voltage in a capacitor. And that's by 90 degrees. So our current for our cap would be up there at exactly 90 degrees. So now when we're going from that, now what I want to say is now to, in order to get the total current for the circuit, what would I need to do? Well, in order to get the total current, you would go, I total, equals I in branch one, plus I two, plus I three, right? Using Kirchhoff's current law, you would add them up. Now the trick here is because they are happening at different times or different angles, you need to add them up what we call vectorally. So you're gonna do that through either complex numbers or through an HV chart, which I go through in quite a few of my other videos. So take a look at that. So that's your big relationships between current and voltage and impedance, right? Again, we still haven't talked about total circuit impedance. If that was something that we cared about, which is rare, but if we did care, we would take Ohm's law and we would go Z total equals E total divided by I total. That's probably how we would calculate our total circuit impedance. We wouldn't do any type of impedance diagram for the whole circuit. Now, what I want to talk about, and this is uh, my favorite way to solve parallel RLC circuits, and that's using a 
uh, power diagram. So in parallel, you can use this diagram, which really, I think, shows the relationships between everything that's in the circuit. So I got this power diagram. Now I draw it with the symbols in it so that I can have that visual representation as well. Again, with our resistive branch, that's this one right here. This is the resistance of the resistor. Then my coil right here has a resistive component. So this is R of my coil. Or sorry, I'm saying R. I don't want to say R. R is not right. Let's do this. Sorry. This resistive component here is going to have a true power associated with it. That's what I want to say. It has a true power associated in it only. So this right here will become power of my resistor. My coil has both a power, a true power, an in phase component, and an out of phase component. Right? That's what happens within my coil. So I have power of my coil and I have reactive power in my coil. Okay. Now my capacitive only has that reactive power, right? So I got my coil right there in the middle. And the nice thing about this diagram is if I look, There's my coil, right? My angle will match everything. Great. Then I can worry about my capacitive branch, which is going to give me Q or reactive power of the capacitor. Again, being a pure device. So it's perfectly vertical. Once you've taken all that information, right? Calculated my true power here, I squared R. Here you can go something like I squared R and I squared X and make a power triangle. Um, or you can use your apparent power formula here for just the coil. Um, and then you can do the same thing with your cap. Um, now what I want to do is now once I've combined all this, my last step would be to get what we call the Q net or Q total. Now the Q total is the difference between my capacitive reactive power and my inductive reactive power. So whichever one is bigger is going to determine which way that this diagram goes. Now typically your reactive power from your coil will be a little bit bigger and that creates a power triangle for your whole circuit, right? Something like that. So you will combine both powers to get your power total, you will combine, and these will just add up directly. Your Q's will be the difference between the two, and then that will give you your S total for the entire circuit. Now, once I have that S total for the entire circuit, um, usually that's about where you need to stop solving the problem. But this angle here, remember, is always our very crucial angle that we want to deal with. So that angle there would be considered our a power factor, right? Now, power factor is always the relationship between the true power and the apparent power, okay? And it's also always, because of the way we do these diagrams and things like that, it's also always going to be the relationship between the horizontal component and the hypotenuse, which means that it is also equal to cos sine theta if you're dealing with angles, All right? So knowing this power factor relationship can be very, very helpful. Now, the biggest benefit that I personally find about drawing this out like this uh, next to my phaser diagram it, is they match perfectly. My current for my cap goes up. My power, reactive power for my cap goes up. My current for my coil is at an angle. It goes down, matches this angle right here for my coil triangle, my resistive component, it's in phase, right? So they all match up. And the same thing will also match up my total current. If I were to calculate my total current, whether it be through an HV chart or whether I take my apparent power 
divided by my total voltage, that phasor is going to kind of be at the same angle and theta as that. So I know my total current in this case would be somewhere around there, right? Of course, my phasor diagram here is not drawn to scale. Um, but that's really just a quick review, reminder, refresh of the parallel RLC current, voltage, and power relationships. Um, like I said, there is some other videos going through some calculations, working through this. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. I do hope this helps. Have yourself a great day.